Hello, this is Rick. I'm back. I'm getting ready to load this in the furnace. Grab it gently with my tongs, lift it up, set it down inside, and make sure it's balanced good. Tongs back over there. And in the furnace. Now I am going to grab myself another piece of tissue paper, the same as I did before. Light it, put it back on, let it go until two-thirds of the lead has been reduced to litharge. And as this process goes, it melts, it'll form a scum on top of the molten lead, then the scum will eventually start to dissolve when the litharge forms by the lead reacting with the oxygen at high temperature. And it will continue to do that, start to revolve, look like it has some what's called interference colors, different reds and oranges around the outside. Anyway, I'll turn the cam on to it when I get to that point and let you see what I'm talking about. But let it do that at that point until two-thirds of the lead's been reduced to litharge, pour it off in the mold, let it cool, pop the litharge off, and then we're going to split the lead pro into two different pieces and cupel it off and separate it into two beads. We're at that point. Well, I guess I can walk over here with the cam. I got plenty of time left on it. It's only a minute into it. Yeah, attempt to take this off. Get another piece of toilet paper out of my container. Uh, put the lid back on. Must have the lid on. Absorb moisture out here if I don't, and it won't light. Look, we got that ready. Come on back over here, do the same thing as I did before, set it on the side of the furnace. At one end of it, boot it off in, drop my lighter, pick my lid up, set it over here on this, and I gotta rewire that up pretty quick. like a jet turbine, seriously. Anyway, let it run for a while until it's reduced down to one third its volume or thereabouts. Anyway, what I'm looking for is a lead bead in the pool of litharge. Litharge will be darker colored than the actual pool of molten lead. And I am going to wait until the pool of molten lead is right down to about the size of a dime inside there with all the litharge around it. And at that point, I will then take it and pour it off in my mold, let it cool, pop the litharge off, split it into two exact pieces, and have pieces of prill the same way. And keep it off. Until then, it's another waiting game. We'll wait until it gets done. I'm going to walk back over here right quick, shine it back inside, and then I'm probably going to stop it until I'm ready to do the next step. And then I'll probably turn the cam back on, let you watch me pour it, and then probably stop the cam again. This is a start and stop procedure, trying to shorten it up where you can see all the necessary need-to-know information. And not turn this into a super long, drawn-out uh, piece of footage with me rattling my jaw about this, that, and the other. And anyway, I'll walk back over here, let you look, and I'm going to stop it. It's just now starting to get to where it's molten. I thought I was going to stop it. Nah, I ain't going to. I'm already four minutes into it. I only got an eight minute time limit on this before it automatically shuts me off. I've done bits of that once with some of the clips I've been doing on this series. Anyway, I'm going to sit here and rattle my jaw, wait. Hopefully it'll get to the point where it will do what's called uncovering. And uncovering is the process where everything is molten and the scum actually gets dissolved and is going off the side. You actually got your interference colors going on with the lead pool. 
mix it with oxygen at high temperature, turn into lead, into litharge, and how does it convert to litharge, any of the copper or other impurity metals that are in the lead pool, it gets slagged off into litharge. And the only thing remaining in your lead pool at that point will be your gold, silver, and any platinum group that's there. And this, there shouldn't have been anything more than gold. There were a few monolithics on the RAM card, so there is a slight possibility I might have a little bit of palladium or silver intermixed with the gold. But if there is, oh well, it's still going to be really, really close to 3.9s. It will be every bit of 3.9. I don't think there's that much there for silver or palladium in what I did. Anyway, it'll all look like a really nice gold bead when it's done anyway. We'll see that when it gets done. And for it to actually be three nines for sure, four nines fine. I